Hello. In this video, I'm going to be discussing sympathetic vibration using my guitar. So to understand this concept, first we have to understand how music is produced on instruments. So in the physics lab, you might be able to produce a vibrating string with a pure tone, with just first harmonic, second harmonic, um, and no other frequencies. But in real life, you can't do that. So when I play a note, you hear the fundamental, fixed on either end, vibrating in the middle. But actually, it's that note you hear is a superposition of the entire harmonic series of the guitar. So you hear the lowest one, but you also hear... Um, so your ear might not actually be able to pick that up, but if you threw that in an oscilloscope, you would see the peaks in the, um, in the series. Uh, this is actually one of the reasons why some instruments sound different than others. That's one of the reasons that why a flute sounds different than a clarinet, among other things, is because they have a different harmonic content. Some overtones are stronger than others on each instrument, so they sound a little bit different. So sympathetic, sympathetic vibration, um, I will show you first, I'll let you listen to it, and then I'll tell you what's happening. So I'm going to play an A. This is the A below middle C, frequency of 220 hertz. Um, I'm going to play that note, and then I'm going to stop the string to prevent it from vibrating. So you should stop the note, and you shouldn't hear it anymore after I do it. You see that you can still hear the note ringing after I've stopped the string. So you might say, okay, that's just the guitar still resonating in its body. That's actually not right. Um, and I can prove that by playing the note, stopping the string, and then putting my hands on the string itself. The body I'm not going to touch. So it's a string. It's another string vibrating with the original note. The reason this is happening is because uh, there's also an open A string on the guitar. And this open A has part of its uh, harmonic content, the higher A. So this is a 110 frequency. The higher one is a 220, which is the same thing as I was playing. So this is very much um, like a resonance phenomenon. When I play the higher A, because the lower A has part of its harmonic content, the higher A, it starts to ring as well. Uh, again, I'll play it for you so you can hear. So you can still hear it's quiet, but it's definitely that A, which is the A string ri uh, ringing in sympathy with the uh, other A I played. So you can do this in more complicated situations. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a higher A. This is the 440 A. And you can hear there's lots of ringing going on. So I'm going to play it, I'm going to mute it, and then I'm going to mute the A string as well. Because we expect the A string to ring when I play a very high A because it's part of the harmonic content. So oh, it didn't work. <laughs> can still hear it ringing. And that's because the A is found not only on the open A string, but also the open B string. Right there. So any note you play, if the harmonic frequency can be found on one of the uh, overtones of the other open strings, they will ring. And now just the D string is ringing, which is the higher overtone. So um, that's sympathetic vibration. Uh, mostly in music, it's not uh, encountered very often um, as part of the musical uh, intent of the piece. Some instruments rely on this to make music, like the sitar, for instance, has a lot of extra strings which ring in vibration as you play. Um, so that really adds to the tone of the instrument as a key part of it. But mostly, this is just an effect which occurs. You can hear it sometimes, but it's not usually of any musical intent. Okay, thank you.